this is our new discussion it will be about reaction yield now under reaction yield we have the limiting and excess reactants now this is a powerpoint presentation that i have made years ago nung nagtuto ako ng reaction yield sa junior high school as a senior high school now by the end of this lesson you should be able to number one calculate the amount of reactant needed or kung gaano kalaming kinakailangan na reactant or the product form kung gaano yung kung gaano kalami yung mapoproduce sa product in terms of mass pangalawa is to compute for the reaction yield when the limiting reactant is present and pangatlo discuss the relationship between the reaction yield and the law of conservation of mass now in this topic unahin muna natin ang defi definition of terms ng limiting at excess reagents now pag sinabi natin na limiting reactant or reagent Ito yung reactant na nauubos after ng chemical reaction. So, ibig sabihin, kapag uh, nagkaroon ng chemical reaction, siya yung magdidictate kung tapos na ang chemical reaction or hindi pa. Kapag hindi pa siya nauubos, the, limit, the chemical reaction will proceed. However, kapag nauubos na siya, mag-stop na totally ang chemical reaction. Pag sinabi naman natin excess reactant, siya yung reactant na may matitira pa after ng chemical reaction. So, nag-stop ng chemical reaction, pero siya, hindi pa rin siya nauubos. So, that is what we mean by limiting reactant and excess reactant. For example, let us know how to make a baby. Now, how do we make a baby? So, kailangan natin ng isang head, isang body, at four limbs in order to make one baby. Pag meron kang given numbers ng parts ng baby, 10 heads, 9 bodies, uh, for the limbs, ilang baby ang produce natin na may complete set ng parts. So, in this case, we will be only, uh, we will be able to produce only 9 babies. Bakit? Kahit na may excess pa tayo ng head at limb, yung body na use up na siya completely. Ibig sabihin, si body na wala nang natira, siya ang magiging limiting reagent. Yung may excess pa, yung may tira pa, sila yung magiging excess reagents. So, pag sinabi natin limiting reagent, pag naubos na siya, mag stop na ang ating chemical reaction. Now, for example, in this chemical equation, we have Na na 100 grams, magre-react siya sa chlorine na meron din 100 grams, will produce a certain amount in grams of sodium chloride. Pero hindi natin alam kung gaano kadaming sodium chloride ang produce. Now, as you can see here, yung chlorine may 2 siya because chlorine is a diatomic element. So, kailangan laging may 2. Kagaya na sinabi ko nung dati, always remember that uh, diatomic elements, dapat meron silang 2 as a subscript because that is how they are found in nature. Next is, mapapansin nyo rin na nakabalance na ang ating chemical equation. Pag sinabi natin na chemical equation, dapat lagi siyang balance, lalong-lalo na sa computation. Dahil, kapag mali na ang balancing, hindi ka na makapag-proceed sa mga susunod na mga steps. So, prerequisite pa lang or requirement pa lang ang matuto sa balancing chemical equation. Hindi lang sa chemistry 1, maging sa chemistry 2 at sa mga future chemistry subjects ninyo. Since you are STEM, uh, STEM students. Now, in order for us to determine which one is the limiting and which one is the excess reactant, ito ang ating formula. It is the mole of the substance divided by its coefficient. Tapos, kapag nakuha na natin yun, hanapin natin doon kung sino yung mas maliit ang value. Dahil kung sino yung mas maliit ang value, siya ang magiging limiting reagent. Now, just a reminder, when we say mole, it is equal to weight over molecular weight. The weight, yun yung given, divided by the molecular weight, which is found in the periodic table of elements. So, for example, let us have sodium. So, si sodium ay 100 grams. So, ang gagawin natin, we are going to find its mole. So, divide 100 grams with its atomic weight, number 11 sa periodic table. It is 23 grams per mole. Lahat ng mga kinukuha natin na value sa periodic table ay grams per mole ang kanilang unit. So, cancel grams, may iwan lang yung mole. So, the, it, so 100 divided by 23 is equal to 4.3478 mole. Mole ang ating hinahanap, kaya dapat naka 4 decimal places para 
uh, magiging accurate yung ating mga values na makukuha. Next is, divide it by its coefficient. No binalance natin ang chemical equation na sodium plus chlorine to produce sodium chloride, naglagay tayo ng 2 na coefficient ni sodium. So, i-divide natin sa 2. So, cancel mole. The final answer will be 2.1739. Yan yung final answer for, so for sodium. Next naman, kukunin natin yung, uh, yung magiging value ng pangalawang substance, which is chlorine. So, chlorine is also 100 grams. I-divide natin siya sa kanyang atomic weight, which is number 17 sa periodic table. Makikita nyo doon na 35 ang kanyang atomic weight. Yun nga lang kasi si chlorine may 2 siya na subscript. So, i-multiply natin sa 2 yung 35, it will become 70. So, 100 divided by 70 grams per mole, cancel grams, you will be left with 1.4285 mole. Ngayon naman, after na natin makuha yung mole, we're going to divide it with its coefficient. Nung binalance natin, hindi tayo naglagay ng number kay chlorine. However, understood na na ang kanyang coefficient ay 1. So, 1.4285 mole divided by 1 mole, cancel mole, it will become 1.4285. Yung violet, siya na yung ating final answer. Now, in this case, i-compare natin yung mga values na nakuha natin. Kung sino yung mas mataas, which is yung sodium, siyang excess reagent. Ibig sabihin, tapos na ang chemical reaction, may natira pa sa kanya. Samantalang si chlorine, siya yung mas mababa ang value, that means chlorine is our limiting reagent. Siya yung magdidictate kung mag stop na ang chemical reaction or hindi pa. So that means si, si limiting reagent ang magiging basis natin sa lahat ng computation na gagawin. Okay? So now in this case, alam na natin na ang limiting reagent ay si chlorine, ang kanyang value ay 1.4285, na di hamak na mas mababa kay sodium, which is 2.1739. Mas mataas si sodium, kaya siya ang excess reagent. Now, para malaman naman natin yung magiging amount ng sodium chloride na produce when you were in junior high school, you were taught the traditional method na kung saan we will omit all what we have done so far and just get the grams of the limiting reagent. So, Sa traditional method, hindi na mahalaga yung ating ginawa nung unang step. Ikakansal na natin lahat, basta alam natin na si chlorine ang ating limiting reagent. So write down 100 grams of chlorine. Kung ano yung weight ni chlorine doon sa given, yun yung ilalagay natin. Next naman is the molecular uh, weight of the limiting reagent. Tapos, next naman is the balancing of the chemical equation. Next naman is the molecular weight of the product. Tapos, the final answer is 165.71 grams of sodium chloride. Now, in this first box, mapapansin ninyo na dito ay alamin natin yung kanyang molecular weight. So, si chlorine kasi, 35 grams per mole siya. Pwede natin siyang isulat as 35 grams per 1 mole. So, pag sinabi natin na 35 grams per mole, na nasa periodic table of elements, we can write it uh, we can write it down as 35 grams per 1 mole of chlorine. Or pwede mo rin siyang balik na in 1 mole of chlorine, there's 35 grams of chlorine. Yun nga lang kasi chlorine is a diatomic element. Kaya lagi natin multiply sa 2. So this will become 70. Okay. So kailangan na ang unit natin dito sa, sa grams... Na, ang unit natin sa given ay magkapataho doon sa baba para makansal natin. So, dito ay grams, kaya dapat dito din sa baba ay grams. So, makakansal na yung grams. Ang maiiwan na ngayon na unit ay yung mole. Next naman, on this part, nakasalalay siya sa balancing. So, dito sa baba, kung ano yung unit natin dito, yun yung magiging unit natin sa baba. Sa baba. So, 1 mole of chlorine. Next naman, dito naman sa part na to, nakasalalay siya sa balancing. Nung binalance natin, yung chlorine dito ay walang number. So, it is understood that the number of chlorine is 1, kaya nakalagay 1 mole. Next naman, sa taasan niya, ay yung kung ano yung hinahanap natin. Which is in this case, yung sodium chloride, itong product. Nung binalance natin, yung hinahanap natin na sodium chloride, ang kanyang coefficient ay 2, kaya nakalagay 2 mole of sodium chloride. Okay. Now, last part naman is the molecular weight of the product. 
Nakalagay dito, mole of NaCl. Kaya dapat nakalagay din dito, mole of NaCl. So, sa final product, yung bawat isang mole ng NaCl, meron tayong 58 grams of NaCl. Paano natin nakuha yung 58? At molecular weight po nila. Si Na, number 11 sa periodic table, ang kanyang atomic weight ay 23. Si Chlorine naman, ay number 17 sa periodic table, ang kanyang atomic weight ay 35. So, 23 plus 35 is 58. Kaya 58 grams of NaCl. All in all, ang magiging answer natin is 165.71 grams of NaCl. Now, in this, uh, using this method, marami ang nahirapan, mapa senior high school man, mapa junior high school or college. Kaya, we found a way na mas maging madali ang pag-determine ng reaction yield. So, ilagay natin sa gilid yung ating traditional method at i-compare natin siya sa new method. Now, sa new method, kukunin natin yung na-compute natin na value ng limiting reagent. Tapos, imumultiply natin sa coefficient at molecular weight ng ating hinahanap na substance. Okay. So, the new method is equal to the limiting reagent, which is yung chlorine, ito yung value niya, 1.4285, times the coefficient ng ating hinahanap. Ano bang hinahanap natin? NaCl, di ba? So, ang coefficient ng NaCl ay 2. So, 1.4285, yung ating limiting reagent, times 2, yung balancing natin. Remember na yung ating coefficient, ang unit niya ay mole. So, times 2 mole times the molecular weight of the product, which is in this case, 58 grams per mole. Ang lalabas din dyan ay 165.71 grams of sodium chloride produced. Okay. So, now, we're going to... Okay, so, so ngayon naman, mapapansin ninyo na mas madali yung steps using the new method compared to the traditional method na kung saan pinag-aralan din namin during our high school and college days. Yun nga lang kasi since may shortcut, mas madali nyo nang maintindihan kung paano mag-compute ng reaction yield. So kapag sa new method, yung limiting reagent, yung kanyang value, which is in this case chlorine 1.4285 times the well, like, uh, coefficient of the product na gusto mong hanapin. Ang hinahanap natin ay sodium chloride, kaya 2. Next naman ay yung molecular weight ng hinahanap natin, which is 58. So, 165.71 grams of sodium chloride produced. Same lang siya sa traditional method. Yun nga lang, mas mabilis or mas madali ang step. Okay. Next naman, paano natin malalaman kung gaano karami yung natira na excess reactant or kung gaano karami I mean kung gaano karami yung nagamit na excess reactant so same lang din ang ating process yung limiting reactant pa rin ang gagamitin natin pang compute para malaman kung gaano karami yung naiwan na excess okay so write down 1.4285 yun yung sa limiting reactant natin times ngayon naman kukunin natin yung ating uh, coefficient at molecular weight ng excess reactant. Dito sa dalawa, sa sodium tapos sa chlorine, ang ating excess reactant ay si sodium. So, kukunin natin yung coefficient ni sodium. Times the atomic weight of sodium, which is 23 grams per mole. Ang lalabas ay, ay 65.71 grams ng sodium ang nagamit. Okay? So, dito naman, Walang masyadong nabago. Ang nabago lang dyan ay yung ating hinahanap. Na instead na yung product, ang hinahanap natin na grams, ang gagamitin naman natin ngayon ay yung coefficient at molecular weight ng excess reagent para malaman natin kung gaano karami yung nagamit na excess reagent. Okay. Ngayon naman, gaano karami yung naiwan after the chemical reaction? Simply lang, we are going to simply subtract uh, sorry, I mean, we're going to subtract the original, which is 100 grams ng sodium, sa... Okay, we are simply going to subtract the original weight minus the amount na nagamit. 
So, 100 minus 65.71, ang naiwan na sodium chloride, ay, I mean, ang naiwan na sodium is 34.29 grams. Okay. Ngayon naman, try answering the following. Number 1 and number 2. Now, get your paper and pencil and calculators. Nakalagay na, nakalagay na dyan ang kanilang balance chemical equation at kanilang mga molecular weight. Para mas madalian na kayo sa pag-solve. Pause the video and then once you have already answered the numbers 1 and 2, sa kanyo uli i-resume. So, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now the answers. This is your answer in number 1 and number 2. Check if your answer is correct or kung saan nun kayo nagkamali. Okay, pause the video for you to check your answers. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Now, for your exercise, for your practice, answer the following numbers. Determine the amount in grams of the product form, the amount of the excess reactant used, and the amount of the leftover excess reactant. Pause the video and then answer the following. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so first question, what are limiting and excess reagents? Pag sinabi natin limiting reagent, this is the reagent which will be used up in a chemical reaction. Now, since it will be completely used up, it will be the one who will determine when the limit uh, when the chemical reaction will stop pag sinabi nating excess this is the reagent wherein there will still be some left after the chemical reaction so the chemical reaction has already stopped and yet this reagent will still have some left over next which of the two should be used in computing for the value of the other substances in the chemical equation? So, which of the two will it be limiting or excess reagent ang gagamitin sa computation sa lahat? The answer is the limiting reagent. What is the relationship between the reaction yield and the law of conservation of mass? Now, when we see law of conservation of mass, sinasabi nito na kung ano ang sum ng reactant, Dapat yun din ang maging sum ng product. So, dapat walang dadagdag na weight, wala rin babawas na weight. So, in our example dito, sa naunang computation, ang ating weight ng ating reactants, which is sodium and chlorine, ay 200 grams. Ngayon naman, sa ating product, ang ating nagamit ay, ang ating na-produce ay 165.71 grams. Ngayon naman, dun sa 165.71 grams na na-produce na NaCl, ganun pa tayong natira na sodium which is 34.29 grams. So if we're going to add, pareho silang magiging 200. The, the reactants will be, uh, the sum of the reactants will be 200, the sum of the product plus the excess reactant will be 200. So that is the relationship between the law of conservation of mass and the reaction yield. Next will be about percentage yield which will be discussed in a separate video.